What's up, everybody? It's your girl D here with Eighth House Energy. I'm here to do um, like some channeled messages in a, in a brief little. Um, well, how can I say? Anyway, whatever. I'm gonna give. I'm just gonna give you some information about this Pluto retrograde we got going on here. Uh, we enter um, into the retrograde uh, itself, the official retrograde, on April 27th. That's five days from now. I'm doing this video on the 22nd, which is a Thursday. Um, so that's Tuesday, okay? So Tuesday the 27th is when Pluto, I can't even talk, Pluto goes actually into retrograde. Now keep in mind, whenever a planet goes into retrograde, there is a pre-shadow period, which happens approximately two weeks before the actual date it goes in. So we have been in the pre-shadow stages of Pluto retrograde since uh, last Tuesday, which was uh, the 13th of April. So Pluto retrograde, it usually lasts for roughly five months. So we're going to be in this until October, okay? I believe it's October 2nd. Yeah, October 2nd. So um, it begins April 26th because it's in Capricorn at 26 degrees Capricorn and it ends on October 6th at 24 degrees Capricorn. So um, I want to read you this bit of, of what Pluto is here so that you have an understanding of what we're dealing with. So basically Pluto retrograde is generally a time of reflection about like power and control issues in your life. It... Um, this particular retrograde for 2021 is not going to be um, much different, but it um, also brings good fortune, but with regret and disgrace. It could bring good fortune, but with regret and disgrace. Okay, so um, this is what I wanted to read to you. So and I'm going to um, put the article that I'm reading from, I'm going to put the link down in the box below. So in, in case you want to check this out. But this is about, this is the Pluto retrograde meaning. It says Pluto retrograde is in transit in a regular cycle, lasting five months every year during the opposition to the sun. As with all outer planets, it causes less concern than the rarer inner planet retrogrades. Transiting Pluto retrograde is a time of reflection about power and control issues in your life. So when you think about Pluto just think about power and control issues. So wherever Pluto is in your chart, like whatever house it's in, that's the area of your life where you're going to experience power and control issues. The sign that it's in represents the characteristics of which you will see those power and control issues show up. All right. And I'm going to go through all of the signs in the houses for you. Okay. But I just wanted to give you um, this meaning here of Pluto retrograde so that you understand what we're going to be talking about here. So if people have controlled or manip if people have controlled or manipulated you, then now is the time to let them go. If you have been to controlling of others or situations, then it's time to let go. This is not a time for power tripping, but a time for elimination. Faded events, okay? And repeating themes will reinforce which of the controlling habits, compulsions, addictions, or prejudices that you have that must be eliminated. So Pluto is going to show you the areas of your life where there are power and control issues. Okay? And it's going to force you to let it go. And the thing about Pluto is... I can't. So, yeah, the siren goes off. <laughs> Pluto rules the ambulance, okay? Um, so, it says, if you have been uh, too smothering or controlling in a relationship, holding on too tight, then you may be forced to let go. And force, Pluto rules force. Pluto rules intensity. Pluto rules compulsive energy, okay? So, you're going to be forced to let go. Let me tell you about Pluto's force, Okay? Pluto rules, I don't want to be disgusting, but I have to keep it 100 with you. Pluto rules vomit, okay? Now, if you think about what it is when you vomit, it's uncontrollable. You can't help it. Once it gets to a certain point, it's going to come, and it's just a matter of you being in position to get it someplace where it won't, it can be contained as much as possible, where there's as little mess as possible to clean. That's the, when you're actually in that stage and you are 
over that toilet or over that bucket and you feel it coming and it's just like, oh shit, it's coming. That's pulse. That's compulsive energy. That's Pluto. That's something you cannot fight. It's coming in. Period. Okay? So, if you are someone who's trying to control other people, okay, what's going to happen is Pluto is going to, if you don't stop trying to control and manipulate certain people, Pluto is going to, if it's a problem, Pluto is going to bring it to your attention. And if you don't stop, Pluto will stop you. Understand that Pluto rules transformation. It rules death. So if the universe don't like the way you're getting down and you out here control, trying to control and manipulate people and you playing games between now and the summer and the, in, in October, you're going to have some problems. And it could end up resulting in your life being taken from you. This is how serious Pluto retrograde is. This is why I'm doing this read, this uh, message here. Now, again, if, it, if you have been too smothering and controlling in a relationship, holding on too tight then you will be forced to let go. So people will drop you. People are going to be in the energy with this Pluto retrograde as if they feel like if you're manipulating them or controlling them, they are going to back you up. And if you don't back up, then something, you know, compulsive will happen. And unfortunately, it can result in, you know, unfortunate situations from, you know, people being upset, going about their way to the extreme of death. Okay. Um, if obsessive or compulsive behavior involving food or drugs has taken hold on your life, then events may force a turnaround. So if you're somebody who's having problems with food or drugs and you're, you know, you it, it's controlling you. It's one thing to have habits and poisons and all that. We're human. We're in this 3D realm. You know, this is basically purgatory so to speak you know it's what you make it it could be heaven or hell and in the process of you finding heaven and hell there's a lot there's going to be a lot of terrible things you're going to experience so you know we all have ways of coping and escaping okay but if you let these mechanisms of cope and escapism control you then what's going to happen is you're going to suffer the consequences of pluto here's um Here's a, 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 sim a, a simple case scenario and a worst case scenario. Say you are somebody who um, is addicted to drugs and it's controlling your life. What may happen is you may end up, you know, if you're high all the time and you call out from work, you may end up getting fired and then you don't have any money to take care of your habit. So you may have to force yourself to get clean, right? You may have to go cold turkey, what have you, because that's sometimes what Pluto will do. It'll have you go cold turkey. OK, you go through withdrawal, toxification, things like that. What could also happen is if, say, you, you know, you lose your job and you're still addicted and you're doing things to try to get money and you resort to criminal activities like robbing somebody or trying to steal something, you may end up getting arrested and going to jail and you got to withdraw anyway. You're going to go through withdrawal in, 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 in your county jail or what have you. Right. So you're going to have to go cold turkey. That's how a lot of addicts end up kicking you know, their addict, their addictions. They end up going to jail because they did something to try to steal to get money for it. That's a simple case scenario where you're still alive. Let's talk about a worst case scenario. You're on drugs, okay? You have no control over it. You got to get your fix. You, it's controlling your life. It's taking priority over everything. What could very well happen is you, if you don't cut it back or you don't try to put anything in place, you could OD. Now, I just told you Pluto rules the ambulance. Pluto rules death. Pluto rules rebirth. So rebirth would be if you went to rehab and got, you know, or went cold turkey or, you know, um, you went through detoxification and withdrawal stages. OK, so that's just examples. OK, so perhaps suspicion, secrecy, racism, gambling or porn are taking control and holding you back from spiritual evolution. Trust your spirit guides and think of the extremes your ancestors endured to have their genes expressed in you. Destroying things that have control over you will increase your spiritual power and lead to personal mastery. So the whole purpose of Pluto retrograde is, is that if there's anything that is um, got control over you, Pluto is going to present it to you in a way that you cannot un avoid the fact that it's something that has to be dealt with. Okay. And then Pluto is going to give you but a period, a short period of time to adjust it. See, when we're in retrograde, everything is all about reflection. 
It's all about, okay, well, look at, let me see what area of my life I have Pluto in and let me see what power and control issues I have. So I wanted to, um, what I did was, I, um, I'm going to do the signs for you in the houses where Pluto is and just talk a little bit about the power and control issues. But what I wanted to do first is I wanted to show you the card in tarot that represents Pluto. And that's a judgment. So I want to show you some different judgment cards, okay, in reference to what you see here. So if you take a look at this card here, you see the heavens above. You see the heavens are calling, okay? Um, this is from the after tarot. Actually, I wanted to show this one this is from the modern modern what is it modern modern witch modern witch tarot judgment you see here this is the subconscious this represents the subconscious because that's what pluto rules your conscious mind is what you can control your subconscious mind is what you cannot control so um the subconscious mind is where things go that you were not able to process you know, um, so for example, say someone ghosted you, all right, and you're not able to, you, you know, that's that's something that's cruel that people do because it doesn't allow you the proper closure to know what's going on. So you may be left in limbo trying to figure out what's happening, why, why did this person leave, why didn't they say anything, and then you end up seeing this person off on Facebook or social media doing their thing, but you call, they don't answer you, you know, you um, try to find out what's going on, they don't reply to you, okay, so they just ghost you, okay, that's fine. Fine. Some people deserve to be ghosted. Some people don't. Now, if you were in a position where you didn't deserve to be ghosted, where you weren't trying to manipulate this person, there was no power and control issues between you two. It was everything was cool, you know, just a week ago, and then all of a sudden you don't hear from them. Naturally, psychologically, you're going to worry. You're going to be concerned. You know, uh, why did this happen, right? Some people can be like, okay, well, fuck it. I'm just going to move on. I see they on, you know, social media, living their life, doing their thing. Obviously, they don't want to talk to me no more. So, you know, you get tired of calling. You get tired of figuring out what's going on. You move on, right? And so that, if you're not able to let go of the pain behind that, because it can be hurtful. If you're not able to let go of the pain behind that, what happens is that gets pushed back into your subconscious and you go about doing what you do. Now, when Pluto retrograde comes, if that is a particular energy or pain that is stifling you from ascending to your best self, Pluto is going to pull that from the subconscious and put that into your conscious mind so that it is on your mind so that you face it. OK, that's how Pluto works. So a lot of people are going to have situations that they were not able to process because it caused some emotion. You see the water here that represents emotion. You see the coffins here. This represents things that people tried to bury deep below in their emotions, deep below the ocean. But what happened was with Pluto retrograde, it comes back to the forefront. It comes it floats back up and the coffin or the closet, so to speak, your closet opens up. So this could have been somebody you did that to. This could have been someone you did something dirty to. This could have been somebody you did something. They say to all these people, say, say, for example, somebody did something dirty to all these people. Okay. Um, what's going to happen with this person with Pluto retrograde is if these activities that they did and hurt and, and the hurt that they caused these people um, is a issue that stops this person from ascending to their higher selves, this in, the, the hurt that they've done to these people is going to come back to that person's mind. That person may not reach out and say apologize or anything like that, but they are going to feel the remorse. Okay, so that's how Pluto works. So here's judgment with this deck. And here it is with this deck. You see the similarities, water, okay, and coffins. All right, coming out the closet. Again, here's another one, water, okay, people uh, floating up. Here's another one. This one is ground, but there's water in the background. OK, so people floating up. OK, so this is all about closets, cleaning out your closet. You know, this reminds me of Eminem tonight. I'm cleaning out my closet. So, yeah, everybody's going to be cleaning out their closet this summer. OK, if you have any unresolved emotions that are keeping you from being uh, your best self, Pluto is going to bring that to the forefront to you. Now, how do you know what it is? Well, it's going to keep reoccurring. You're going to keep having thoughts about it. Or situations, say you're in a situation where someone's trying to manipulate and control you. It's going to start aggravating you. You're going to start seeing this person for who they are and what they're doing. And it's going to start aggravating you. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have to put your foot down. Now, if you don't put your foot down, 
then, you know, it, it could cost you in some sort of way. Okay, so you got to get rid of people who are trying to manipulate and control. You got to cut them off. You have to cut them off. You have to gain some spiritual strength and you have to say, you know what, enough's enough. And if you can't cut them off, limit your conversation with them. Limit your communication with them. Period. We're all adults. We do what we want and what we don't want. If you want it, you'll do it. If you don't, you won't. It's that simple. If you need spiritual strength, talk to your ancestors, your spirit guides, your guardian angels. They're there to help you. They're always there looking at you. Okay? But you have free will, so they can't just jump in and move shit around for you because it's not going your way. You have to have an established relationship with them, and you have to connect with them and ask them to step in and give you strength where you don't have it. Okay, so I want to talk about some of the things that Pluto rules. I was telling you about ambulances. Okay, um, so you're going to hear a lot of ambulances this summer, especially if you live in, um, you know, city areas, major metropolises, things like that. You're going to hear that. Okay, ambulances, um, atomic energy. Like I told you, Pluto is powerful, so it rules atomic energy. Um, betrayal, okay, bladders, so if you, you know, if you got bladder issues, that may become relevant, and it may come out more relevant now, so you may be going to the doctors for those things, um, your urinal, you know, your, your urinary tract, okay, blood disorders and blood poisoning, okay, so that's like alcoholic poisoning, drugs, those are the things that poison your blood, okay, so be careful of those things, um, what else can we talk about? Of course, bombs, atomic bombs, um, bootlegging. <laughs> Anybody who's doing anything illegal, like who boosts boosters, I'm telling you right now, you need to find another profession until after October 2nd. Because nine times out of ten, you're going to get caught and you're going to go to jail. Okay? So if you know any boosters and you into astrology, you, you got a family member or somebody who boosts, and you know what it is if you boost. Okay, that's somebody who's, who gets um, stolen merchandise and they sell it on the street. Okay, that's a booster. And the way they get the merchandise is they steal it. Okay, so boosters. Pluto retrograde, you don't want to fuck with. If you don't want to go to jail. Okay, brothels. Okay, <laughs> Pluto rules brothels. Um, Pluto rules casinos. Um, cemeteries, of course. Uh, chemists, chemistry, chemical stuff. So be careful with the drugs you're mixing because you can get um, blood poisoning. A lot of people may be ODing, especially if you have addictions. All right. It rules clairvoyance and clairvoyance. So a lot of people are going to be very uh, psychic. Your psychic abilities are going to be really upfront because you're going to be able to see manipulation and power struggles in your life. Because that's, again, coming from the subconscious and coming back into the conscious mind. So it will be apparent to you more so than ever before. Okay, coroners, corpses, corruption. So we're going to see all kinds of things, uh, crime, criminal crime gangs, things that people have done criminal activities. For those of you who are investigators, um, police, detectives, things like that, now is a good time for you to start looking back at your cold cases or cases that have been hard for you to crack, looking back through those cases, looking back through the evidence, uh, maybe reaching out to people again and talking to them because people are going to be in the mindset. If, if somebody is remorseful, they were accessory to a crime and they were remorseful about what happened. This is the time where they're going to be remorseful. So this is the time where you want to investigate those type of things. Okay? Cold cases. If you're somebody who you know something went on in your family and people won't talk to you, they tight-lipped about it, but it's something that they regret or it's something that's sitting on their conscience, now is the time to ask them about it again. Okay? Because they may be more willing to talk to you about it and open up to you about it. Now with Pluto in retrograde, bringing things uh, to, the sub, to the forefront, to the conscious, that people tried to bury in their closet, so to speak. All of the devilish shit that people did, for example, let's get to extremes where you say somebody killed someone or murdered someone. And it's a cold case. Um, and the police went to talk to witnesses and things like that who last seen this person or whatever and nobody said anything. If the police open up a case or they get some type of, okay, something wrong, wrong about me with this case, let me open this case up again. Or some new information came up about this case, let me check it again. Nine times out of ten, you're going to resolve that case, okay? Um, so those of you who are uh, uh, police officers and things like that, 
um, the planetary alignments are, if you are a police officer and you deal with the people, anybody who deals with people and people's behavior and psychology, really you should get into uh, astrology because that's going to help you to understand the, the energies that are going to be going on. Okay, so police are going to be busy. EMTs are going to be busy. Okay, people that help people when they're sick or when they're having issues, physical issues are going to be busy. Alcohol, drug rehabilitation centers are going to be busy. Jails are going to be busy. Um, physical rehabilitation places are going to be busy. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there anything else in particular that I want you to know that Pluto rules? Uh, let me just show you this book, too. This is called The Rulership Book. It's by Rex E. Bills. Um, this is a great book because what it does is, you see here we have Pluto. It tells you all the things that Pluto rules. All the things that Pluto rules. Not only does it do it for all the planets, it does it for all of the signs. Here's Pisces, for example. All the things that Pisces rules. Okay? And then it does it for the houses. All the things the houses rule. Each house. All right. So this is a great book for those of you who are trying to learn your chart and try to understand and you're doing the work yourself. Rex E. Bills, B-I-L-L-S. I'll put the uh, information about the book in the um, below the box. OK. But it's called the rulership book. But let's get into it real quick. So let me see what time we got. OK, so, yeah. So I just wanted to show you some of the different judgment cards here where basically what you're seeing is in this one here this is the egyptian tarot this is anubis uh this is the he's the guardian of the underworld and he's taking someone who passed away to be judged you know how they take the heart and they put it on the scale and if and then they put the the heart on one uh scale and a feather on the other and if it's even then you know you you did well if your heart it weighs more than the feather then you got things on your heart. You died with things on your heart, meaning you're conscious. There were some things you did and didn't do. And so as a result, you're going to be judged for that. So this is what that card represents. But all of them have similar scenarios here where you have the subconscious energy here in the sky judging you. This one has angel, the angel here. All right. This one as well. Okay. This is the energy coming down. You see here, judging the heart. It's going directly to this person's heart. Okay, and then here's another one, judgment. So let's talk about it through the houses, okay? So Pluto is the energy that you're going to feel, okay? So when we talk about how a planet affects you, we're looking at what, what characteristics a planet has. Pluto's characteristics are power and control issues. The house that is in represents the area of your life where you're going to see the power and control issues. The sign that it's in represents the, the, the way that the power and control issues are going to show up. So let's start with Aries. So Aries, ascendance and sun signs. You have Pluto in your 10th house, okay? Pluto's in Capricorn. So Pluto deals with, it's in Capricorn right now. So Capricorn deals with your morals, your internal clock, what you know to be right versus what you know to be wrong. You know, you have your internal rules and then you have the rules that you have to abide by in the 3D realm and then you have universal rules, okay? So an example of a universal rule is... Um, was an example oh karmic karmic connections okay uh where the universe sends someone in to teach you a lesson and if the lesson is not learned um then you know you won't be, you will be stressed you will be in distress until you learn a lesson and get this person out of your life a 3d rule is you know you can't kill someone <laughs> right you, or you you're going to be judged for it um a personal rule is, okay, you know what, I won't kill anybody, but if someone comes at me, then I have a right to retaliate, right? That's that's a, a moral rule, right, for example. So we're looking at um, the houses, okay? So Aries, sun signs, and Aries ascendants. When we're talking about the Capricorn energy, um, it's going to be in your 10th house. So power and, power and control issues are in your 10th house. The 10th house talks about your career, your um, responsibilities, your achievements, your professional achievements. OK, um, it talks about your fame, uh, you know, as far as what people who pe who people know you as. So what do you do for a living? OK, well, I'm a dentist. So people know you as a, as being a dentist. Um, it also talks about authority. OK, rules and regulations within authority figures as well. Um, it talks about uh, patriarchy as well. Now, in general, 
the 10th house talks about your reputation as far as your career, also how people see you, whether it's in your profession or whether it's just, you know, how they know you, right? And so how it's going to show up as far as the power and control issues, the way it's going to show up for Aries is what you may have to do is you may have to be a little bit more active. You know, things are going to be presented to you and not everybody has Pluto retrograde issues. Some people do. So if you're Aries, it's going to show up in the form of your career and your professional achievement or basically how people see you. So, you know, you may be propelled to be more active uh, in a situation where maybe you've been more laid back. Actually, this is a this is a time. I'm sorry, it's not a time to be active because retrogrades are a time of reflection. So you may want to reflect on the activity or the lack of activity that you've taken in reference to your career endeavors. You may want to reflect on how assertive you were, okay, or or a lack of assertion. You also want to be careful with Aries because you don't want to be too headstrong. You don't want to be too impatient. You don't want to be too proud or quick tempered. Those are negative uh, energies uh, that, uh, Aries deals with. So you may be forced to look at these things. All right. Maybe there's some power and control issues with your boss. Maybe there's some power and control issues with you, uh, finishing school. Maybe there's some power or, 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 uh, um, control issues with you finishing a project or why you may start a project and then you don't finish it. Like those types of things are what you're going to, um, experience Aries. If you have Pluto in your, uh, 10th house, all right, so Taurus, Taurus, you have Pluto in your ninth house, okay? The ninth house deals with foreign travel, adventure, um, higher education, customs, you know, various customs as far as cultures, faith, belief, okay, um, spiritual quests, aspirations, journalism, which is writing and publishing, religion, uh, risk-taking. All right. So the way it's going to show up for you, Taurus, is you may have power and control struggles in this area. So, you know, maybe there'll be some um, concerns in reference to um, you uh, being adventurous. Maybe you don't do anything. Maybe you're, you know, and you look back like, damn, I didn't, I didn't take any trips. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. Maybe about education. Some of you may have started school and didn't finish. So the power and control issues with that because the ninth house deals with higher education. So we're talking about, you know, your uh, associate's degrees, your bachelor's degrees, your master's, your PhDs. OK, so some of you, if you've taken classes, you may be looking like, damn, you know, why didn't I finish or, you know, what's keeping me from finishing school? Um, so you may see that manifest in a negative way. You got to be careful not to be jealous you got to be careful not to be lazy. You got to be careful not to be self-indulgent and stubborn, okay? Because Pluto's going to put that at the forefront for you in reference to things. So you may want to, um, you know, try to be more earthy about things. Try to be more, you got to be careful with possessiveness too, is what I'm getting here for um, Tauruses. All right, Gemini's, it's going to be in your eighth house. Okay, the eighth house rules um, investments. It rules intensity because Pluto rules the eighth house. So this is um, where Pluto is at home. So it's going to be in retrograde here in reference to sex. Uh, ooh, erotic capital. You know what erotic capital is, right? Adult stores, adult things that you sell in, in erotica. Okay, uh, because it's capital, meaning you could make money from it. You could sell it. You could buy it. Also, secrets, mysticism, obsessions, inheritances, kundalini energy, stalking, and the underworld. Geminis, ascendants, and sun signs. You have got to be careful with people stalking you, you stalking people, okay? If you're trying to control someone and trying to manipulate someone to do what you want to do, you need to back off right now. Okay, the universe is going to bring that to you in a way that lets you know, I need to back off or something happens. Okay, if somebody's trying to do this to you, the universe is going to bring it to them as well. But it's up to you to cut this person off. Okay, because you can get, you know, the ramifications of Pluto if you know that this person is someone who annoys you, but you are a weak spirit. Pluto does not, it's not going to allow you to be weak. Pluto is about power. So it's going to show you where you're weak at. So if you got someone who's overpowering you, Pluto's going to bring that to your attention. And it could be something that's going on in private that a lot of people don't know because we're dealing with the eighth house. Also, for some of you who are trying to control and manipulate people, you're doing it on a low, trying to be sneaky about it, meaning that you may be coming off as a friend. But in reality, you got some other intentions. You should check yourself because what's going to happen is um, 
if you're not, you know, the negative energies that could come about is changeability. You know, you got to be careful because Geminis are very smart. You got you can't be too cunning and you got to be careful with gossip. OK, gossip is very important for Gemini. Be careful that because it's going to bite you in your ass. All right. Um, being nervous and tense. Some of you need to sit down somewhere and it's hard for y'all to do, but you may be able to do that more so now than ever before. All right. So we got um, cancer. Cancer is in your seventh house. The seventh house deals with partnerships. OK, relationships, um, best friends, marriages, business partnerships, uh, sharing, justice balance and social awareness and it's going to show up in your life in a manner of you know you having to um not be in a, a place of self-pity not soaking around not being touchy and unstable because things are not going right in your life and if you're being that way it's because there's a power and control issue somewhere you either not you either need to back off from trying to control something and as a result of you trying to control it it makes you feel uh unstable emotionally um, back off from it. And if you are trying to um, control someone, you're going to become unstable. Okay. And things could happen. You need to be careful. We know Pluto could end up in, in unfortunate situations. Okay. Where it could be anything from, you know, you, you losing a connection to, you know, something as extreme as death. Okay. Leo is your sixth house. Where am I at here? Leo is your sixth house. Okay. Um, the sixth house, it deals with your work, your um, your work ethic. It also deals with self-discipline, your health, your physical health, your pets, actual enemies, open enemies, enemies that you can actually see and you know that this person is your enemy, okay? Uh, it deals with your skills and your daily rituals. And the way you're going to see that manifested, Leo, is if you don't be careful, it'll come out in a form of conceit, being domineering, and being excessive, um, so you do want to be careful with that. So, you know, check out what's going on in your work environment here or your work habits or your, your health habits. Okay. You may, Pluto's going to put, um, you know, those things to the forefront in that area of your life. We have Virgo. Virgo's in the fifth house. Okay. Virgo, sun signs and ascendants. The fifth house is where Pluto is for you. The fifth house has to do with, uh, performances, entertainment, creativity, costumes the things you love to do for fun okay it also deals with you know passions your passions what you're passionate about it also deals with your love making style your fetishes your sexual fetishes um your pleasures things like that it has to do with children as well things that make you laugh it has to do with the speculative markets like gambling lotto things like that so the way it's going to show up for you, Virgo, it could be that, you know, you're overanalyzing things. You, you, you know, you're trying to control something, so you're overanalyzing it, looking at it over and over and over again. It's going to bug you out, all right? So you got to be careful, uh, Virgo. You got to be careful that you don't become fussy and overcritical with people, okay? Because that's a way of you being controlling and manipulative, okay? A power control issue where you're trying to tell somebody how they should do something or, or what they should have and what they shouldn't have when you just got to let people be. You know, Virgo can be very picky. And you're going to have to back off. And universe is going to, universe is Pluto's going to show you where you're being too um, picky. What could happen is you could lose friends, you could lose family members, people don't want to talk to you, they want to deal with you because you could be too judgmental and picky. All right? So, and people want to have fun. That's what the fifth house is about. So if you ruining people's fun, you know, people ain't trying to be around you. So you got to be careful. And if you're not having fun, then people ain't going to be around you. Libra ascendant, Libra sun sign. This is going to be in your fourth house. So we're talking about the fourth house deals with your family. It deals with your home, your background, as far as where you grew up, your generation, not your generation, but generational, um, Things that have been passed down through your generation, through your bloodline is what I want to say. Um, it deals with being comfortable, privacy, um, self-care, okay, where you live at, your inner world, all right? And it's going to manifest in the um, characteristics of Libra, which is, um, you know, you may have to back off of, of something if you're being too power and control and you're hungry. You're going to have to back off to create balance, OK, so you're going to be doing things to create balance. So if someone's trying to um, control and manipulate you, you're going to cut them off. If you're being too controlling and manipulated, you're going to realize that Pluto's going to bring that to your attention. And you're and then you're going to balance the scales and back off. But uh, Libra, you have to be careful not to be so frivolous 
and not to be so indecisive because that's a problem for Libras. It's like, oh, you know, something may be going on and you know it's wrong, but you won't make a decision on it. You know this person's an asshole, you know they're manipulative, but you won't cut them off. But at the same time, you don't like them and you don't like the way that they're being towards you. So you're going to have to cut them off. If you don't cut them off, what Pluto will do is Pluto will put you in a position where you will suffer a fate as a result of you knowing you should have cut this off, but you didn't. And it's the opposite spectrum. If you're being too pushy on people, Pluto's going to show you that. And if you ignore it, then, you know, you're going to suffer the consequences of that as well. So then we go to Scorpio. Scorpio, ascendance and sun sign, you have Pluto in your third house. The third house rules your speech. It rules your thoughts. It rules the conscious mind. OK, um, it rules social media, all types of communication, um, excursions, you know, little trips that you take around the area. You know, you go to the grocery store, you know, you go to, you know, whatever you do, you go get some gas like that's that's third house energy. Um, also siblings. OK, research street life, you know what you do locally. OK, um, circulation. OK. Um, it also deals with discussions, surroundings, and your sociability. You know, how social are you? So it'll come up in the characteristics of Scorpio, which is transformative. So Scorpios, what you may be experiencing is um, a change, a transformation in, you know, maybe in your living situation. Uh, maybe Pluto is telling you it's time for you to get up and leave. Um or maybe Pluto is telling you there's a power and control issue in your environment. So uh, maybe your thoughts, okay? Um, so you have to be careful not to be too fixated, not to be too jealous, and not to be too suspicious, okay? And if you are, Pluto is going to show you where you're doing that, and then it's up to you to back off of that, okay? Um, if somebody is being that way to you, the same thing. You need to cut them off. If you don't, then there could be an issue because of the fact that you know you should not have this person around you, but you have them around you. Similar to what Libra was experiencing. And we have Sag. Sag, it's going to be in your second house. So Sag Ascendance and Sag Sun Signs. The second house deals with your material world, your possessions, um, finances, your talents, the way that you make money. Uh, Capricorn deals with your profession as far as what you do to make money. The second um, house deals with how much money you can make doing what you do, right? And it also deals with worthiness. How do you, how worthy do you feel, you know? Um, so, for example, you could have people around you. It's going to show up in the Sagittarius energy. That Sagittarius energy represents, you know, people being over-enthusiastic if they're being, you know, controlling. Or over-enthusiastic, taking too many risks, so, you know, Sagittarius, you want to be careful not to be so irresponsible and not to be tactless. Like, watch what you say, how you say it. Watch what you do and how you do it. Tactless is people doing things without following the rules. There's rules to everything. All right. And if you don't know the rules and you just act being tactless, like over overstepping your boundaries with people, places and things. So the universe is going to let you know that you've done that or people in the form of people telling you back off. All right. So, again, this Pluto energy is all about backing off, not trying to be so controlling and manipulative. And it has to do with your second house, which is going to show up in the way you make money or how much money you make. OK. Also in your self-worth and what you feel is worthy. Capricorn is in your first house. OK. So Capricorn sun and ascendant signs is uh, Pluto is going to be in your first house, which deals with your physical body, your your outlook on things, your self-image. Um, your life philosophy, okay, your opinions, uh, your self-awareness, okay, um, your self-expression. So it will come off in a Capricornian uh, way, which will be, you know, if you're too serious, like if you're too um, uh, authoritative. Some of you, you got to be careful not to be too bossy, okay? Um, power and control issues. For some of you, if you may feel like people are trying to control you, so you may just, you know, ghost people and just be really by yourself you could be um, frustrated you might be miserable or pessimistic you know you got to be careful not to be that way because you got people controlling you these are the people you need to cut off if they make you feel this way if they make you feel alone if you're with people and you feel alone 
That means that you're not being respected, your opinion's not being valued, the things you want to do and what you want to talk about is not being valued or even paid attention to. That's a sign that you need to cut someone off. If you're frustrated, if this person frustrates you all the time, cut them off. If they make you, you know, if you're miserly, you know, if, if this person that you're dealing with is miserly, they're very selfish, self-centered, cut them off. You know, if they're very pessimistic, if you're around people who always dampen your day and dampen your mood, downer Debbie, cut them off. And at the same time, you can't be this way because the universe is going to show you that where people are not going to want to be around you. You're going to be alone. You know, um, people are going to be frustrated with you. OK, people are going to be miserly with you. They're not going to be very uh, they're not going to tell you things, you know, or they're going to keep things from you. So you have to be careful with that. And then we have Aquarius, Aquarius Ascendants and Sun Signs. You're going to see Pluto in your 12th house, okay? The 12th house deals with the subconscious mind, okay? That's um, where Pisces resides, the subconscious mind. Your dreams, karma, forgiveness, baggage. Um, it deals with um, the trance states like meditation, the different states of meditation that you um, can go into when you're meditation. It, it has to do with healing as well. OK, um, spiritual development. OK, and then uh, guilt. So it's going to show up in Aquarius like energy. Now, Aquarius like energy is very experimental. It could be very liberal. Um, it could be, you know, group oriented, humanitarian oriented, um, very edgy. It could also be kind of, you know, because air sign could be kind of detached, too. So Aquarius, you have to be careful of not being too eccentric, uh, not being too erratic being too not being too impersonal and being rebellious okay so <sighs> power and control struggles in reference to this area um you you know not doing what is good for everybody you're just being a rebel you're being totally you're going totally against the grain totally against what everybody is doing you know and that could result in criminal it can go to the extreme where it can result in criminal behavior and then here we're talking about jail death you know, those types of things that Pluto rules. So you got to be careful. Okay, Aquarius, you got to be careful not to be too uh, um, too much of a rebel, a rebel rouser, um, not to be too much against the grain at this time, but to maybe fall back and not be so controlling is what I'm getting here and not to be so cold and iced out. All right, Pisces, Ascendant signs and Sun signs, uh, Pluto's in your 11th house. This deals with friendships. It deals with group creativity. It deals with like communicating, I'm sorry, community is what I want to say. Um, it deals with uh, discoveries of yourself and other things. Um, it also deals with rebellion and experimentation. So it's going to show up in a way where, in, 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 through the characteristics of Pisces, which is like um, maybe you're not being as compassionate as you should, being very careless instead of being compassionate. Um, instead of it being healing, um, it could be uh, escapism. So instead of you taking a medication to heal, you could be overdosing, taking it because of the psycho, uh, the psychedelic effects of it. So you have to be careful, okay, not to be too addicted to things, um, not to be so indecisive as well, because your uh, the Pisces energy is mutable. Meaning like it can go one way or it can go the other. So it's like you're going to have to decide on something. So, for example, if you got someone who's uh, trying to control you all the time, one minute you're talking to them, but then the next minute you're not. But then the next minute you take calls from them and you hang out with them, but then it's like you don't want to hang out with them anymore because they're too controlling. Like the universe is going to make you choose. You're going to have to decide what you're going to do with this person or with this situation because it's not going to allow you to be indecisive. And, you know, some of you may, you know... Because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings because you're too compassionate, you know, you may take the frustration out on yourself by, OK, well, let me let me pop this pill or let me just to escape the situation because I'm dealing with someone who's got a power over me or is trying to control me. And instead of me, you know, standing my ground and being spiritually strong and saying, I don't want this person around anymore, kick rocks. You know, the person is still around and you're frustrated and use that frustration to go do, you know, drugs to, to, you know, to help you relax or something like that. So the universe is going to pull that in the forefront for you as well so that you can address that issue. A lot of what's going to go on with the overall energy for everybody is that you're just going to have to stand up and have some spiritual strength and you're going to have to tell people to back the fuck off. Or you're going to have to cut them off. 
Okay, because if you don't, what's going to happen is Pluto will end it for you, but it will end it in a way that you didn't expect and it will end it in a way that you don't like because you didn't take the initiative to end it. All right. So that's what I got for you guys with this um, Pluto retrograde energy. Um, I wish you the best and um, be careful out here this summer. Don't let people control you. If you see people are controlling, manipulative, cut them off right away. You know, don't play games because, you know, you could be in a situation where this person, whatever their manipulation, whatever their manipulative tactics are, if you don't cut them off beforehand, those tactics could work on you and you'll be at a disadvantage. All right. So I love you guys and uh, hopefully this helps somebody and I will see you guys later. Deuces.